Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Cops volunteer communities in Ketan Moss game with roadblocks. Command of Air for Police Assistant Commissioner Donovan Graham says police under his charge are challenged daily by residents, particularly those in inner city communities, who continue to block roads despite efforts to keep the thoroughfare clear. On Wednesday, roughly two weeks after reporters published a story, Franklin Town residents lashed police for failing to clear roadblocks mounted by thugs. Graham told reporters that cops have been persistent in clearing roadblocks. However, there is an insistence by residents to remount the blockage under the guise of protecting themselves from gunmen or intruders with deadly intentions. According to Graham, not only are roadblocks unsightly, but violated National Solid Waste Management Act, which he warned against. Whilst you are entitled to demonstrate lawfully, blocking the road is a breach of the public order. First, we try gentle persuasion to try and get them to clear the roads, and then we call in the state agents responsible to engage them, but sometimes persuasion takes a long time. We have gone in and clear roads in many instances, but in some instances, they remount it. The main excuse is that they use it as part of their security to avoid the drive-by shootings. Franklin Town comes to mind. The Kingston East Divisional Commander Superintendent Tommy Lee Chambers has cleared sections of the community over time and some have been remounted in the space. Whilst you can see the challenges in having members of the security forces on every corner in such divisions, some communities resort to that, claiming to be trying to prevent drive-by shootings. We always try to engage citizens, and we have done so in many instances, and they told us that it forms part of their own protection. We have engaged members of parliament and leaders of communities to see how best we can use another method that is more pleasing to the site instead of old fridge and garbage, Graham stated. Further, Superintendent Chambers, who heads the Kingston Eastern Division, recently told reporters that she had been waiting for the availability of front-end loaders from the JCF Specialized Operations Unit to clear affected roads. Up to Wednesday evening, there was still a roadblock near the intersection of Wellington Street and Somerset Avenue and near the intersection of York Street and Cumberland Avenue in Franklin Town. Reporters sought an update on Wednesday from Chambers regarding situation, but the superintendent was tied down in a meeting and could not comment. Meanwhile, Franklin Town residents who are against the practice because of the inconvenience it causes to people who have emergencies have appealed to the Commissioner of Police to intervene. They have also called for a national discussion to tackle the issue of roadblocks and accuse the police of not doing enough for roughly eight months to keep the roads clear. Reporters were told that people who have tried to reach hospital at night, time have been affected, as well as the disabled, public transport operators and commuters. Their belief is that it is not so much to prevent drive-by shootings, but to obstruct the authorities, allowing them to be able to brandish guns freely. Besides, one resident, a female who requested not to be named, said she does not buy the story about unavailability of front-end loaders. The argument about front-end loaders is foolishness. The army has front-end loaders. The police always work with the army, so it shouldn't be a problem to get assistance from them to come into the community with equipment and clean up the place. I think there should be an insistence for the place to be cleaned. It gives us impression that she and the gangsters are hugging up. There is something why she cannot touch them as the commanding officer. If it was uptown, they would clean it up long time. Because this is Franklin Town, we must get up every day and see old junk with rats running all over the place, pal we. If the police are here to serve and protect, they are supposed to serve and protect the people them. It shouldn't be where people are saying that in order to secure their lives, they have to block the road it shouldn't be. Another vocal resident said the community is beginning to feel more each day that cops are working in tandem with talks and honoring their wishes. It looked like the police agreed the roadblock prevented drive-by shooting. June 14 going to make it three weeks since reporter's story came out. The road was blocked from October 17 and all know it can't pull. People can't use the road and they have no confidence that the police will remove the roadblocks. We want the commissioner's office to be alerted. I am calling for the intervention of the police commissioner. I think it would send a big message not only to Franklin Town, but to a number of communities across Jamaica 
where roads are blocked for months and nobody removes it. The resident added, we want to know what is the protocol re roadblock and how it is investigated. We can't just have roadblocks in Jamaica and police and soldiers drive past it day and night and then just nonchalantly a drive as if roadblocks are a part of the culture and it is alright. What if the road where the police station de pan did have blockage? How would they have dealt with that? There should be a national discussion as to how we deal with roadblocks in Jamaica. Nine year old Sickler Mom needs help. Nine year old Alex Scott's dream is to become a firefighter, not only to help those in need, but also to earn enough money to support his ailing mother, 33 year old Latoya Brown. She suffers from multiple health issues, including an enlarged heart, for which she wears a pacemaker, sickle cell disease, impaired vision, and high blood pressure. I would like to take my mom to stay at a nice hotel because I think she would have fun. It will take her mind off things, but I don't know if she will live that long because she has much sickness, the youngster said, of the only parent he knows. Brown, who lives on Seven Roads, Clarendon, is worried about the impact her health is having on her child. She is become sicker every day, she said, even though she constantly seeks medical attention. My illnesses affect my son negatively because he shouts at me sometime, maybe because he feels pressured to be looking after me while going to school, she said, of the Effortville primary student. Sometimes I just sit and tears fall from my eyes, but I understand that he is under pressure with schoolwork and sometimes I may call him to assist me with something. But I really can't do any better. I feel a way because I'm putting undue pressure on him. I would love to see so I can at least look after him, said Brown. As she spoke, the ticking sound from her pacemaker became faster, an indicator of the stress she feels at the thought of not being able to adequately care for her child. My eyes are sick. I'm not seeing well. I am only glimpsing. The doctors say its cataract is covering the right eye. There is blood behind it too. I can barely see my fingers. They say the nurse behind my right eye tear, and they say that it's the only thing that can try to save. I really need the help to fix it because I can't see to do anything for my son. I am really sick, she appealed. Her inability to care for her child is compounded by the fact that she only relies so heavily on him. Sometimes after he leaves school, I don't eat until he gets back because I can't manage on my own. He has to get ready for school by himself and I'm not sure how he looks when he leaves the house. That makes me feel frustrated, not being able to do anything for my son. My mother lives with us and used to look after me, but she took sick and has been admitted in the hospital for more than a month now, said Brown. She's hoping eye surgery will help alleviate some of her burdens, but she can't afford it. A quotation from the doctor shows that she is in need of a surgery that will cost $1.5 million. Dr. McIntosh has confirmed her medical condition. Adding to the grownness of medical conditions are fibers and an enlarged liver. I have been with the pacemaker since I was 16. I was born with sickle cell disease and the doctors say that it's causing the eye to go bad, she said. I need to be able to look after my son. I don't want him to end up in a gang or anything like that just because I can't look after him. Please, if there's anyone out there who would like to help me, I really need it, she urged. Anyone interested in providing financial assistance to the family may do so through Latoya's Brown NCB Maypen account number 564-305-480 or contact her at 876-529-1598. Man ordered to pay 300 k for using phone to hit female cousin in the mouth. A man was ordered to pay $300,000 in restitution to his female cousin after pleading guilty to using his mobile phone to hit her in her mouth, causing injuries that cost approximately $100,000 to treat. The man, Ricardo Bent, was charged with unlawful wounding. Bent told the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday that the altercation between him and his cousin was as a result of her giving his son water to bathe in a small basin, one that you could use to wash the dishes. I have a small son, your honor, my son supposed to go bathe, and she kept some water in a small basin, and said she bathed out of it already, and he must bathe with it. And me tell her say, him can't bathe with that, so she start cuss, and she say all kind of thing out of her room, 
and come out to have argument with me, Your Honor, Bent explained. He also noted that when she got close to him, she eased off his face, and that's how he ended up hitting her with his cell phone. However, his cousin told the court a different story. She told the judge that Bent wanted the child to bathe with a purified water, which was for drinking purposes. She also said that her gum is still swollen from being struck in the mouth. According to the woman, the incident between her and her cousin happened because him and his father have some altercation. The complainant, who has a young daughter, added that she spent almost $100,000 to see a dentist for treatment, medical consultation and x-ray examination because her tooth was fractured. Mr. Bent, having pleaded guilty, you are to be sentenced. On these facts, it is appropriate that you make payment in compensation. You see the swelling on your cousin's lip, and you've heard in terms of the money she had spent already, and the figure don't sound exaggerated at all. You're going to pay every cent, senior parish judge, Lorian Cole Montague informed the man. Her medical expense already amounts to $100,000, plus the court would take into account the days of inconvenience. I say it all the time, you know, when a woman's face is battered, more than the physical, there is psychological effect, she continued. After seeing a picture of the complainant's injured mouth, the judge uttered, Oh dear, so eating must have been difficult. Following a short discussion on the amount to be paid, Bent agreed that he would pay the $300,000. A total of $30,000 was paid over to the complainant in court, and Bent was advised that he is to return to court on July 19 to make another payment of $100,000. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.